Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to go over how to validate HTML form elements with jQuery. This video will not only help you validate standard text fields, it'll also help you determine if an email address is valid or not, you know, if one of your video buttons has been selected, and will assure you that at least one of your multiple choice checkboxes has been chosen by a user. Okay then, so let's get started. So you can see here we have a form, and um, this is just a quick form I created earlier. It has a logo, and it's kind of laid out in a way that will allow us to test some of the traditional validation properties of an input field. So right now, if I click Submit, it'll just go straight through to a page that's not found. But obviously, if that was a page that connected to a database, we don't want to enter information that doesn't exist yet. So we've got a standard HTML skeleton with a style sheet that's open here. And I've obviously styled the form now. This video isn't really about the style of the form. Uh, I've also included jQuery by Google as always and as well as in the JavaScript folder I've included a, a validation file which right now is empty obviously uh, and then the form just consists of you know some input fields, some drop down boxes, some radio buttons and some check boxes and then at the bottom there's a submit button and here is where errors are stored so if I type in hello you'll see when I save and then go back to our form it'll say hello at the bottom and this is where we're going to place our errors so you know your name is too short you have to select a checkbox you know you didn't choose a gender etc etc so now if i get rid of this we can start to validate our form so i'm going to save this then go into our validation.js and i'm going to say document dot ready function so obviously when the document is ready to run jquery run this function so if i just write alert d you'll see that when we refresh the page we'll see d because the page is ready to run JavaScript, and it did. So now we're ready to run JavaScript, we need to say, okay, when the form has been submitted, run a function, the same as when the document's ready. Close this off. And the function has to start with some variables, because obviously our form doesn't know what we're trying to validate. Our validation has no idea what we're trying to validate. So to type a variable, you type var for variable, and you see the color code makes it go that color. So name, equals and then a jQuery selector open brackets and then in, in, in single quotes type input because that's the type of thing that we're validating and then name equals name because you can see in my index.php file my name insert your full name you can just see here that the name has been set to name this is primarily used for PHP you see our, our, our form method is post so um, this will be written if we went into our PHP it will be written as that underscore name you know the name is what's used in PHP mainly okay so now we've got our name but this will just return a HTML element so we need to type dot val which is the, the value of what's in the name field so if I just type alert name and now run this you'll be able to see that whatever I put into the name field for example hello will be alerted to the screen when we submit that's that's perfect that's exactly what we want but now we can get rid of this because of course we don't want it to alert the name to the screen and now variable email equals let me just tidy this up again the same thing input but this time the name is equal email close that off dot value which is just the value of the email field exactly the same as the name field variable gender and this one's slightly different only because this is not an input this is a um, this is a select field you'll see here you know this is has the input type of text input type and then this is select with the name of gender so obviously we're going to write gender select name equals gender exactly the same and then dot val we want the value of it and you can see here, this is where it's pulling the values from. The default is select, which is what we're going to be filtering out, saying make sure it's definitely not select, because obviously then we don't know what the gender is. Um, value for the second one, male and female. Um, come back over into here, and we can carry on now. So you can see I've also got a field called subscribed, which is a radio button thing that just asks, are you subscribed yet? And for the purpose of this video, you're going to have to be subscribed to continue. So we're going to treat not quite yet as an error. So let's type variable subscribed equals and let me tidy this up again I'm really bad for wanting to be neat and tidy like this and then again the same thing but slightly different so we have select 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 input things like that and this again is an input and then it has the name equal to subscribed but this time we're going to close this off and say if it's checked we only want the obviously we only want to retain the checked values we don't want to retain every value you know in the entire in, in the entire um, array we just want the ones that are checked 
And now, the last final one, the second to last one even, I've left one to the last because it's particularly weird. Um, the last one is called Lettuce, which was just a random thing that I came up with. Um, basically, the idea is make sure that this input contains the word lettuce. You could use this for a capture, you could use this for every, uh, whatever you want, but the input has to contain a certain word. And in this case, I've, we've decided it to be lettuce. So now input name equals lettuce because that's what the name is in the HTML file here. You see if we go down, Finally, please type the word letters, name, letters, and again, dot val this time. And then the final one I've left to last is kind of a weird one, and it's to make sure you enjoy the video. You can see here the names have um, these square brackets in it, and that means because we're saving them as an array. So for everyone I check, don't just, you know, take over the previous value. So if I check speed code, then the value becomes speed code. But then if I check voiceovers as well, don't just array speed code and then overwrite it with voiceovers, add it to, a, to an array. Um, so and this is typed out like this, so you type var, enjoy, again variable names can be whatever you want as long as you remember them, you know, this is just referencing the question, um, and now I'm going to say input, um, checkbox, and then with the name equals enjoy, open and close brackets, yeah, let's do some quotes here, quote, quote, close off the square brackets, that starts the name, and then we only want the checked res results returned, um, and then obviously we want to map it. Map basically just mean is a, is a way of validating checkboxes. That's what you need to know for the purpose of this tutorial. So map, and then we need to run a function. And again, go down a couple of lines, close this off. But then before we do a semicolon, we type dot get, which will then obviously get the value. And then inside here, write return this dot value. And it's literally as simple as that. Um, so now we've got every single check. So if I alert, I'll show you actually. If I alert enjoy, you'll see, okay. So if I've selected tutorials, it'll be tutorials. Obviously, if I go back and then select speed coding, it will just comma increment them. So tutorials and speed coding as opposed to the next value just taking over the previous value. But now that we've done this, we can start to actually validate the fields. So you have to start in reverse order. So you want to start from the bottom question and go to the top. And the reason for this is if you do it in reverse order, when you click submit me for validation, the last validation thing it runs will be the first question. And that means that if this is all left blank, the first error you'll see is please enter your first name because we want to go obviously in a linear fashion from the top to the bottom so now let's start this the first thing we want to do is say if lettuce so the value of the lettuce field is does not equal to lettuce because that's obviously what we told the user to put into it and then errors equals true which reminds me we need to define another variable at the top and that's just the errors and set it to false by default and this basically just says okay if there's any errors in the in the you know, in the form, then at the bottom we have run a function that will then say if errors equals true, so if the form does have errors, return false, so don't submit the form if there's errors. Um, so let's carry on down here now. So we've got this done, so errors equals true, and now here we can write if errors equals true, then return, oops, return false. And now obviously errors will be true if this input doesn't contain letters, so if I click submit, Oops, I made a spelling mistake. Errors. I hate that when you're watching a video and you see them make a spelling mistake, but they don't catch it yet. So now if I refresh the page, this obviously doesn't contain the word letter. So if I submit, you hear I'm submitting that. Um, the form doesn't submit because errors equals true. There's an error on the page, but we don't actually know what the error is. So now obviously here you can see the section that holds our errors is called errors, so dot errors. So now if I say dot errors, Dot HTML. So the HTML content of the errors paragraph tag should be, hmm, let's say, let's move this up actually. Let's make an individual error for each um, section. So errors equals true, and then errors.html should be, sorry, you didn't type letters. So now if I, you know, play this back now, you'll see, sorry you didn't type letters, and then if I, if I do type letters, it won't quite disappear yet, and that's because we need to say at the start, we need to say errors dot HTML is nothing. So that means every time we press submit, it'll clear this and leave the way for another error if, if an error exists. So you can see now, sorry you didn't type letters, but if I type letters, 
I'm then able to submit the form because errors equals false. You see how that works. So let's continue down the page now. Um, the next thing we should validate is enjoy. So if enjoy dot length and length here doesn't mean exactly what you think it means. It means if the amount of checked boxes equals zero. So if there's no boxes that are checked, then obviously there's an error because at least one has to be checked. So now we can say again, errors equals true. And then change our error message now. So now of course we type, you know, please check at least one box. And again, as it's reading it in a linear fashion, it'll say this first. Even though if I get rid of letters, it'll still always say this first. And then if I check one box, it'll say, sorry, you didn't type letters. It moves down the page. So now again, we can carry on. Obviously now we want to know if any radio buttons have been checked. So we can say if subscribed length equals zero, which is obviously the, um, are you subscribed? Of course, not quite yet. So if subscribed length equals zero, you must subscribe to continue. And again, let's go through it one at a time. The top error is you must subscribe to continue. So if I say, of course, it'll then move down. Please check at least one box and then it'll move down. Sorry, you didn't type lettuce. So now let's do the rest without check and see how we get on. So if gender equals select, which obviously means if the value of gender is select, which obviously again, in turn means if they haven't selected male or female, then we can copy this again errors equals true and then the errors in paragraph tag should be please choose your gender you see now let's carry on now we only have a couple more left but one of them includes validating an email address which we need a, a, a javascript function for so instead of you having to watch me type this out i'll just paste that in i'll leave this in the description or in the comments it's a function that says is email that will then just check a string for these characters which obviously validate if it's an email address or not you don't really have to understand it at this point it's pr pretty difficult to get your head around and um, so let's continue down we've just validated gender and now we need to say if is email so if this is an email address and then pass in our email variable from up here so if the email is a valid email then you know we we don't want it to be an error so let's say if it's not a valid email and then obviously this means the email is invalid so please enter a valid email address Let's just do please enter a valid email, keep it as short as possible. But now also we, we don't want to say please enter a valid email if you've only entered two characters, you know, just A, B. So if email dot length, if the length of the string entered into the email field is under, hmm, what would you say? So it needs to be at least at, for example, gmail.com. So let's say if it's below seven characters, then again, errors needs to be true and then your email is too short. Continuing on, now we're up to the name. So if the name dot length is greater than, let's say 60, no one's really got a first and last name longer than 60 characters. And we'll say your name is too long. Because obviously we have to be storing this in a database at some point, and we don't want to be storing 500 worth of characters worth of nothingness. Um, so let's also say if the name is under five, let's say four, because then you've got two, two. That's the shortest name I can imagine being realistic anyway. Um, and then again, your name is too short. So now we've also done if errors equals false, if errors equals true, return false, which means don't actually do the default action, which here was to run submit.php, which doesn't exist, but you know, this would be your PHP validation file. And um, so now if we go to the form, refresh the page, you'll see your name is too short. So if I put in Mark Hinton, you know, now submitted, it'll say, please enter a valid email. So I type mark at worldmerit.org, which is my work email address. Um, it'll move down the page and say, please choose your preferred gender, male. And now it'll carry on down. Please be subscribed to continue. So of course I'm subscribed. 
please check at least one box save all of these I, I like all of these videos and then sorry you didn't type lettuce lettuce submit and now that this will submit to your your PHP file where you can enter this data into the database now you know it's pretty simple this is only a 17 minute video but this covers so much in form validation using just jQuery a tiny little bit of JavaScript but mainly HTML elements and jQuery so thanks a lot for watching this video I hope it's been really helpful if you'd like to see a video on how I made this form in HTML then that's something I'd be more than happy to do so leave a comment leave a like let me know what you think thanks a lot for watching this video and I hope to see you back here on this channel again for the next one